everybody, Richard Neese here with Weikert Realtors, The Space Place. We appreciate you guys tuning in to the Real Estate Rundown. Like I said, I'm Richard Neese. I've got Dominic Gill working all of the buttons back there, getting all the transitions going. Thank you, Dominic. We appreciate it. Hey, bro. You know, the Real Estate Rundown is a way for us to help good people get to a better place. We started doing this about two years ago, and the guy that did the first show is on here, Josh Phillips. Josh, we appreciate you getting on here. Please like, please share, please comment. We wanted to be able to give you information, give the consumer information about buying a home, selling a home, buying land, uh, you know, buying an investment property, whatever the case might be, we wanted to bring on the experts to help you do that. And so the show was started, and two years later, uh, we're still running. We appreciate you guys getting on here. Uh, Katie McKay, uh, I, I do work a good bit. That's right. Kyle Graves, Brandon Patterson. We got John Wayne Key, uh, Mr. Key's son just got on there, so you just have to turn it down a little bit there. Uh, Bethany Aldridge, we got my wife, Catherine Neese, Becky Gray, Kyle Manning, Kim Kerber. Thank you guys so much. Please like, please share, please comment. So we've got Amanda just joined us. So we've got Amanda Stanton here with us uh, from Alabama Farm Credit. And Amanda's going to talk to us about barn dominiums, 50-acre plots, buying chicken farms and cattle farms and everything else you guys do over there, right? Everything in between. That's right. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you guys do um, in general terms. Then we'll get a little bit more specific. Okay. Well, I'm a lender at Alabama Farm Credit. Cody, I do not have a Mountain Dew today because we didn't have any <laughs> oh, Mountain Dew today. Interrupting her. So, yeah. So, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you back on the Mountain Dews? Because I heard on a previous show you had stopped. Well, I, you were four I, I, days cutting clean. back. Cutting back. That's what it was. So. All right. All right. <laughs> And you said you how much how how much better you felt. I, I did Dew. feel better, but you know sometimes the, the Mountain Dew just pulls you back in. I don't know what it is, but I've got water today, Cody. Thank you for pointing that out. My <laughs> trainer knows that too, I'm sure. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Very well. All right. Well, I am Amanda Stanton, and I'm a loan officer with Alabama Farm Credit. Um, we are located. Um, my office, uh, particularly, is in Coleman, and we're located right off St. Joseph, um, or on St. Joseph, right off 157. So if you turn off 157 on a St. Joseph, we're the first business there. Um, our company is headquartered here, out of Coleman, Alabama. Our administrative office is on Eva Road. A lot of people say that. Um, yeah, that is a little bit confusing. It is. I'll say yeah, that because I, yeah. I, I don't know. If, I thought it was two different places. So mm -hmm. you guys are actually the same company. We're the admin, same company. Okay. Yeah, that's our you. administration office, and I, I take that for granted. I try to make a real habit if I'm setting an appointment with somebody, making sure they know uh, which, which office they're sure. going to. But that's where our CEO is. Uh, we cover all the counties, basically Jefferson County North. My office covers Coleman and all the surrounding counties, but we work all over the place. And, and you just walked into something I was going to say. You were telling me before we while we're doing the prep that you guys there's actually two different a sister company that works south of jefferson county and you guys work all the way north is that mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. uh, correct so uh we get our money from farm credit bank of texas so our sister company who also does the same is called alabama ag credit so they you. cover everything uh, south of us but we can do that too um i guess i should point that out too so if you are if you live in coleman or if you live anywhere in north alabama and you're looking to buy some investment property or whatever the situ yeah. situation may be 100 acres in baldwin county County, yes, right? then yeah. we will finance that all day long. <laughs> You're going to take care of us. Yes, right. absolutely. we got a bunch of folks getting on here. Courtney Campbell, John DeSico, Christopher Presto. Now, Presto, I thought we were talking about a barn dominium. We're going to talk about that in a little bit now. Uh, Justin Smith, Casey Pickett. We've got Kathy Owens, uh, Lawrence, Kathy Owen Lawrence, and, and she would be a good person to talk to up in the Huntsville area. She's one of our good agents. Megan Martin, Annette Grobman, thank you guys so much for getting on here. Please like. Please share, please comment. If you've got a question about financing a farm, if you've got a question about a building on 10 acres and how that process works, I know you guys do more than just farm stuff, and we're mm -hmm. gonna talk a little bit about that too. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you get started in the lending business? Well, I, um, I was in the commercial bank business. Um, I was uh, in the commercial bank for five years before I started Alabama Farm Credit. And I, I was just blessed with the opportunity to come work at Farm Credit and have more of a personal uh, sure. experience with the, and get more on the lending side um, and really be able to, to help the borrower and, uh, in ways that I wasn't limited to in the commercial bank. I, I always think kind of the commercial bank, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I'm not trying to dog the commercial She's bank. She's bashing I'm this commercial not, bank not right now. You know, <laughs> but a lot of it is a lot really black and white. Yep. You know, you've got a certain, this is all we do, um, you know, confirmatory loans, this is what we do, this is what your credit score has That's to right. be, this is what everything is. So it was just kind of very black and white. It's not very personal, and one of the things mm -hmm. that we say with the Richard Neese team is we want to help good people get to a better place. And if you're dealing with farmers out there, there's a lot of good farmers exactly. out there. Take exactly. care of us, so. And you know, they're 
financials, their tax returns, things like that, it might be a little bit out of the box right. to what that commercial that bank sense. looks for. So um, that's what drew me. That's why I joined, you know, that's what I'm passionate about. That's why I love what I do is it's really looking and talking to that farmer and looking at those financials and really figuring out what's going on there. That's right. And, you know, seeing if it's something that we can help. You know, not not everything is, is black and white when it comes to being a business owner, I mean, that's ultimately sure. what you're doing. You're self-employed. Yeah, so. that makes perfect sense. And there's lots of things that uh, business owners do to protect themselves from taxes Correct. and things like that, that if you know what the business is, if you know what the farming industry does and how things work in that, then you can really see if they're profitable or not. Mm -hmm. Because something that looks very profitable may be fooling you because they're not showing any of their expenses or vice versa. It may be very profitable, but they they just bought a tractor and they did this, this, <clears> and this. So it gives you a better picture because you know the industry. Yeah, that exactly. That's one of my favorite things to do is somebody will call and say, I'm self-employed or I'm done this. You're probably not going to be able to help me. No bank ever has. And it's like, well, I can't make promises, but come in, sure. let's sit down, let's, let's talk see. about, let's look at the uh, financials. And usually if you're making a profit, you know, we can see that oh, and, and go from there. So we got Chris Green, the flood guru in the house. He, he announced. You did busy. you see that? He better be busy. Uh -oh. Yeah. oh, I'm sharing stuff. Uh, okay. I just want, I was curious right, if we were sharing or not. Do I need to share it on mine too? Uh, yeah. I okay, I'll, I'll go through the groups. Now I got you. Um, Angie Wilson, Chris Cotton, Miss Pauline Cotton, thank you guys for getting on here. So one thing I would like to talk about, Randy Wilson didn't know him yet, he's one of my agents, but he's got a chicken farm. Um, it's in uh, north northeastern county of uh, northeastern part of Coleman. How do we get that finance? I mean, what, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the farm itself? Are you looking at the borrower? I mean, how does that work uh, with a you know, poultry it's farm? A, yeah, it's a combination of a lot of things. So, um, you know, first thing we're looking for is does the farm cash flow? And what I mean by that is, is the price that you're asking for the farm, is it going to pay for sure. itself? And that's not Which necessarily, you know, but, you know, it depends on the type of farm. That's not necessarily always the case. Um, you know, you may have a lot of land involved. Right. Right. And we may be looking for external um, places of income or cattle or things like that. But generally, that's one thing to look for. Is this still going to work? Because a lot of folks are wanting to maybe not work their full-time job and come on the farm and work full-time. Right. So then that's what we're looking for. Are we going to be able to make this payment and, you know, your family to survive if you make this purchase? Um, so on the borrower side... Um, we work with um, like the Farm Service Agency, for instance, um, if a down payment is an issue, because that's the biggest thing, I guess I'll back that up. Generally speaking, on a poultry farm, we can finance up to 75% of the purchase okay. price. So when you're looking at a million dollars or even right. half a million dollars, that's a that's a big chunk of change. So do you guys, does it have to be cash? Can it be other properties? It can be other property, okay. yes. Um, but like I said, there, there's those those borrowers can be few and far in between. Sure. Uh, so we're fortunate enough to work with uh, FSA, the Farm Service Agency, and be able to uh, finance maybe up to 90% or even do some joint financing with them to help with that down payment. So, so, so one of my friends, Chris Cotton, just asked a question. I don't know that you can answer this question, though. He says, will a retired battleship go FHA? I don't think you guys... <laughs> I don't reference on that one. So, so anyways, it's, he, out, of my, it, it's right. out of your lane. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so with the, the farms, a lot, I know a lot of times I've talked to other lenders and they say well you've got to have x amount of years worth of experience in that industry mm -hmm. in order to, to to get this loan and you got a lot of folks that maybe it's a quarter of a million dollar loan for the place uh, they've got the, the finances to back it up with two full-time jobs whatever mm -hmm. the case might mm -hmm. be they want to start farming exactly but yeah they don't have the experience of farming. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you'll have even uh, companies, especially on the poultry side, if I've been working with X company, I can't go over to Y company within X amount of time because I might get the poultry sick or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. do you come up with those problems a lot or is that something you guys don't, don't look at as far as the reference to how long they've been doing the, the job? You know, as far as the experience, um, you know, that's something we talk about and you know, we're, we're not, um, you know, we don't want to ignore that aspect, sure. but, um, we're also looking to expand and grow, right. you know, get new people in the industry. So, I mean, that's not something that deters us is that if you've never uh, been on a chicken farm. Now, we want to equip you and help you that's and right. get you with the right resources right. so you really know what you're getting yourself into um, and be successful. So you had a great point when you said you, you want to help those new farmers. You were telling me an interesting, it wasn't a statistic, but you were telling me an interesting fact that you guys are seeing more and more is that the age of the farmer is going up. So you got a lot of folks that have been farming for 50 years. Years, now they're retiring 
uh, and you don't have a ton of folks that are younger that's taking that on, what are you guys doing in order to help those younger farmers? We've got some particular program. Um, we call them our YBS program, Young Beginning Small Farmers. Um, that's a big thing. Our CEO is very committed to us reaching out and right. helping that new generation farmer get started, you know, not only for the livelihood of honestly, you know, the world and America, sure. but the livelihood of our organization. You know, we need Makes those sense. folks coming on there too. Um, because that's something that we hadn't, and I may be jumping around here, but we're a bar-owned cooperative. Okay. So part of what we do, we're farmer-owned majority, but bar-owned cooperative. So in order to have a loan with us, you're going to buy some stock into the company, okay. and now you're an owner. But with that, you know, what's the benefit of that? We pay back a patronage. We pay back a dividend. So we've got to be making good, strong, solid I loans see. to be able to pay that back to our borrowers. Uh, that check will come out this year, end of March sometime. You know, this year for 2018, we're paying back over $9 million. Oh, so that was a lot of a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, you know, with all of our offices. Sure. Um, but that's a big deal. So that's why, you know, it's a big focus of us, and, you know, not just helping the farming industry, but to keep keep us going and keep us strong. We know we've got to be bringing those new folks in um, and getting those new operations started. And that's a little bit of risk for us sure. too. We know that, you know, if you've never been in the poultry industry, you know, we're going to help you do all we can to make sure you've got the resources. Um, but we need those people. That we need sense. new people in farming. So we got Jack Hale, Alex Voss, Chris Pitts, Brian Coon, Crystal Tyree, Joy Laney, thank you guys. Please share, please comment. If you have a question about a farm loan, we're going to get into the construction side that you guys do as well. Um, and there's a few other things that um, it's not just farm stuff. It's not just big tracts of land. Mm -hmm. You guys do a lot more than that. So I want to touch on those things. Um, what's the what's the thing that you guys do that's the most overlooked loan pro program that you have? Is it the, the Barnuminiums like we were talking about earlier? Uh, no, that we're, we're getting out there on that. But yeah, it's just your rural tracts. You know, if you're looking at five acres in the county, you know, that's something we'd love to help you do. Um, buying that land. So you something know. that's important to point out, most people think that if they've got a first-time home buyer loan, so to speak, that they can get that for no money down or 3.5% down. That's not the case. Exactly. Now, you guys do do more of that than anybody else, I would say. You know, you mm -hmm. have local banks that will finance tracts of land, but they don't even like doing that. Usually it's 25 to 30% down. Uh, what are you guys looking at as far as your programs go? So people have a clear picture because I, I, I hate getting that first-time home buyer that's called me and said, I've been pre-approved for 150000 We want to go buy 20 acres. It doesn't really work that way. No, and I'm glad you brought up pre-approval. I'll, I'll answer your question, and I want to kind of okay. hit on that as well. Um, so, yeah, so let's say you've got somebody looking to buy some land that they're either, you know, like I said, it can be recreational. They're looking to buy a hunting track. Yeah. They're looking to make a timber investment, or they want to buy some land that they're eventually going to build on or want to build on. So um, just kind of generally speaking, we can finance up to 85% um, of the purchase price or the appraised value if that's lesser. but So you've got to have some sure. skin in the game. But we're looking at 85% on a 20-year term. And that's another thing that we can kind of help compete with is that our terms that right. we match and do. Um, but when you speak about the pre-approval process, so that's something that I like about what we do too. And I encourage people, if you're looking, if you're in um, working with a real estate agent, and I know yeah. real estate agents are fantastic of, of having so their... Some of them are. Right? Say having that. their, you <laughs> know, right. when they're working with somebody, because it's important. You it know, is. lots, you know, when, you, when you've made that offer, then is not the time to start looking for you're financing, exactly right. especially if you are buying, you know, buying land or something like that that might be a little bit uh, different. But, you know, come to us, see us about a pre-approval. And the way our pre-approval works is, um, you know, we approve you based on your credit. That's good up to six months. We okay. can do that for up to six months. And the only thing that's contingent on is the appraisal, you know, that we do right. an 85% loan to sure. value. So, it's um, so, we, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so you say, you know, I know I don't want to spend any more than, you know, 200000 We pre-approve you for 200000 and that's it. Like, we do full, I guess my point is we do full underwriting from the beginning. You go find that piece of land, and as long as you've got the down payment, that's great. So and you can get in that. Is it a quicker that, process? I mean, how long are you guys looking at by the time you get a contract if they are all the way pre-approved? Oh, like yeah. Truly underwritten. How long are you looking at that time frame for a track of land? I say yeah, that. well, let's just, I mean... I always like to over, to yeah, you're yep. going to hold me to it. Well, then I'm going to give my standard, days, standard right. team day button. You know, I always say, tell folks, you know, 30 days, two weeks for an appraisal, then two weeks sure. for a title, but it's generally 
sooner than okay. that. You know, we're hoping to close these within, you know, three weeks if possible. So you're making me come up with more questions, which is dangerous because I okay. haven't prepped you on uh -oh, this. Uh -oh. But we're talking about timber investments. So obviously if I have a, a, a piece of land, let's say it's 10 acres, it's got hardwoods, we can go harvest it right now. It's worth X amount right now, but when I harvest it, it's not worth that same amount. So how do you guys evaluate that and make that loan work? All right, good. Very good question. Are you ready? There. Do we need a little prep time? No, no, no. no you're, that's a great yeah. question. So, so Justin Burnett just popped on here. Justin actually just, he bought, it's been almost two years now, but he bought a track of land uh, through you guys. So it, he, he, he's, I think he's, he's done some of the timber work on it, but I'm sure he'd be interested to hear this question too. Yes, yes. So um, that's great. So I want well, to make sure I get what you're asking is that. So I get an appraisal on 10 acres that has hardwoods, it has everything, we're ready to harvest it. How does that affect the process? Because once I harvest that, it's worth less money at that point. Correct. So what are you giving a loan off of? Okay. So, yes. So if you're buying something and your, your goal is to immediately harvest that, then we would appraise that as a cutover track. I see. Um, and, and, and address it that way. And as long as you're paying for that. And a lot of times it depends on what you're paying or you know that you need to pay that money right. down. Um, when we do a large timber track, if it's good, mature timber, things like that, or, you know, if it's mostly wooded, you know, we're going to have the bar sign what's called a timber cutting agreement. And it's not that we're trying to dictate what you could do to your farm. It's just that, as you pointed out, if we finance that yep. as a, even if it's just a deeply wooded lot, right. and then you go and clear cut it, and I'm it's, talking it's about a, a true yep. clear cut you know, loggers have come in and there's oh, yeah. stumps and, you know, things like that, then that has greatly devalued your sure. property. So we ask one of two things. Either we're going to reappraise it and you're going to pay that down on your loan and we're going to go on, yeah. or we're going to help you um, either do operating money or help you use that money to clean it up. You know, okay. we want to, you know, if your you. goal is to turn that into pasture land, that's our goal too. You know, we want to sure. help you get that. So I've got a guy doing that now. So we're, we're doing um, some equipment loans for him and some things like that because he's harvesting it, but then he's wanting to turn it into pasture land. Sure. And so, um, you know, not only are we, we finance the land side of it, but we're financing, helping him getting that land cleared to get into pasture land to get more cattle out there. Well, great. That, that answers my question pretty well. Um, I know that they do that a lot of times with builders too, if they're buying a, a a piece of land and they're building on several houses on it then they parcel that off you have to pay x amount for mm -hmm. that piece so it makes perfect sense for you guys to do that so let's talk about barn dominiums i get a lot of people calling me asking me i want to build a barn dominium i don't know how to get started i actually had a, a young couple that have uh, one, two, three. They have five children. Um, ah. and they just had twins. Oh, wow. And, and, yeah. and they're trying to figure out what they need to do to get a barn dominium. Uh, they've got their track of land. I think it's three or four acres. They're trying to figure out how much down payment they need. How does that process work? And when we're talking well, earlier. I know this guy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not you, believe it or not. But yeah. So, so where, what do they need to do? Obviously, they would call you and talk to you. But how do you guide them in that process? Because they've got to make X amount on their house in order to build this barn dominium. So mm -hmm. they need to be prepared on the front end, so they're not stuck in a place where they can't afford to build. Sure, absolutely. <coughs> so what we would do there, um, you know, for that person we were talking, you know, my first question to them would be, how much are we looking at finance? And have right. you got your bids yet? Have you got a good idea of what this is truly going to cost? And, um, you know, where is my And they're going to bring you a build out that, that's showing that? You're going to do an appraisal off of it? Or, mm -hmm. okay. What we like to see is our, you know, what we require is going to be an estimate, a bid sheet, or what we call a blueprint, you know, as much yeah. detail as we can get sure. as to what you're buying. Um, and that's what a lot of folks, you know, how much am I going to have to put down? Well, as a lender, I really try to look at that on the front side before we get into the expense of an appraisal Absolutely. and everything else is, do I think this is legit? You know, do I think this is going to appraise for enough? Right. You know, if you're building something that, um, you, you know, you've got the three acres, so let's say we don't have a ton of acreage right. with it, um, but what you've picked out averaging $150 a square foot, right. um, I'm going to start asking some questions and saying, you know, we may not get sure. this to appraise on the beginning. Because what you've got to understand, too, with these appraisals, a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean my house isn't going to appraise for what I spent into it? Things like septic tanks oh, yeah. and dirt work and those yeah. costs you're, you're that we're finding. Yeah, on this yeah. One, I'm you. you know, those costs that are cost of um, building the house, That's but right. they don't always directly. <laughs> You know, show the golden through. countertops. Yeah, yes, that's right. the appraisal. 
Um, so that's where we have to be really careful. You know, if you're building something and you've got a lot of acreage and, you know, that can help. But so that's that's my point. You know, we really try to do some due diligence and try to find some comps and things like that to say, all right, we hope we can fall in here. Here's what you'll be looking. Sure. And I always try to go worst case scenario. I'm, I mean, I, I think I scare people a little too much, but I try to say, okay, you know, worst case scenario, I think you're looking at putting $20,000 down. Is that something that's feasible right. or are you willing to take that risk to pay for this, you know, $650 appraisal? Sure. So Aaron Ayers just jumped on here. Aaron uh, is, is a native of Holly Pond and a big time duck hunter. He likes to hunt in general. So Aaron, you need to go back and watch this uh, because we're talking about buying tracks of land. And right. he always needs a hunting for, track. Yeah, he's always looking for hunting land. And he's in a good spot to do it, do something with it. So you definitely need to listen to this. I appreciate you getting on here. Anita Dean, Chastity Wright, Jackson Smith, Brandon Snyder, Deborah Moses, Cameron Kimbrough, Christy McCarver. Christy's going to be an agent soon. I hope she's already started her class, but she's going to be an agent. Uh, and there's a lot of land where she lives at, so I'm sure she could help you sell some around there too. <clears throat> so we've talked about um, what you guys need to do to get started on the barn dominium. Uh, and then you guys do construction loans in general, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, if it's mm -hmm. just a regular house and you want 10 acres, um, do I need to buy that land first? Or how, how do we need to work this process so I can get the house I need and not have to put 50% down? Sure. Well, a lot of that depends on, I guess, what you're paying for your lien and stuff like that. But, you know, for Talk most... to your realtor so you can get a good deal on the land. That's There's a lot right. of people that think that they know what the land value is and that they really don't. Yeah. Well, and a lot of things, too, you run into um, is when you're adding on. So maybe someone, maybe I bought five acres and it was worth $75,000. Mm-hmm. And now I'm buying the adjoining, you know, 20 acres. Right. You know, a lot of your buyers, they're not educated to understand. Well, now we've got 25 acres. Sure. You know, it's going to be, yep. it's not going to be the same the value, price per exactly. acre. Absolutely. So a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, get disappointed of like, wait a minute, I thought. I've had that conversation 20 times this week. Why does two acres cost as much as 10 acres? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because mm -hmm. it's two acres with road frontage and it's a home site. I can get a builder to come in there and buy it for twice what it's worth because he's mm -hmm. going to build a house on it. Yep, exactly. I'm there. I got you. Yes, exactly. So, um, and that's what, you know, a big part of what our job is, just like your job, you that's know, right. is educating those folks as that's they right. come in and not being blindsided on the, you know, after we get that appraisal of what can happen. Right. So, um, but yes, you know, buying the land, we can do that. After one year, use your equity into it. Or, you know, if you want to do it all from the start, just know because of those extra costs, right. you may have, you know, to put some money out of your pocket down, depending on what it is. Um, but what we do is a little bit different. We offer a product right now. We do basically um, permanent financing from the start. Whereas okay. your traditional bank may do a construction loan and then you turn around and have to do um, regular, you know, yeah. permanent financing after the construction's built. We do it a little differently. So um, it's been a very good product for us because a lot of people, they want that simplicity and that ease of knowing sure. that I've got one loan closed and this is done. That's right. So kind of what I touched on before, when you're getting your bids, your estimate, um, your drawings, I want a lot of detail. I need as much detail as possible because we're going to have your 10 acres, your house plans, and that appraiser is going to go out there and appraise that as is. That's right. So if you're putting on vinyl siding or stucco or whatever, those details we need to know. If you're doing hardwood floors as opposed to carpet, I need to know that so I can be sure to let my appraiser right. know, yep. you know, this is where the value is going to be on that. So once that comes in and we say, okay, we're under an 85% loan to value, we're making a 20 year loan here, we're ready to roll. We close the loan, your construction money goes into a special construction account. Okay. So on day one, you have a loan. So let's just say it's for $150,000. Yep. So we close the loan, you've got a $150,000 loan. The $150,000 for construction goes over to our construction account, your loan starts. You have six months interest only. Okay. The first six months, um, and we're paying you whatever your loan rate is. We're paying it on that construction money, so okay. you're not paying. It's it washing. Makes sense, right? You're not paying for money that you're not using. So you've got those interest-only payments for the first six months, and then after that, and of course, we hope it should be your house is done by then. Sure. But starts your regular principal and interest payments. There is no, you know, we lock those from the beginning unless we do a variable, uh, right? But that's, I mean, that's done. It's simple. It's a one and done process. So we just had a couple guys jump on here. Matt Weaver is another big hunter. He's always looking for tracks land down. 
uh, Dodge City area. So, Matt, if you can go back and watch, uh, we've talked a lot about purchasing tracts of land, farms, things like that. I know you guys have been looking. Uh, Cameron Kimbrough said, what's the minimum down payment on the construction loans? And is, it a 20, is 20 years the max term? Uh, we can do. We do, and especially on um, what we consider the consumer side, your residential housing, things like that. We can do up to a 30-year term. Uh, those are just limited to a 75% loan to value. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. When you were talking about building, we've got an 85% on the 20-year term, 75% on sure. 30-year term. So if you're building a house on 20 acres, you've got your equity there. You've got Absolutely. your value there, or 10 acres, or you know whatever, depending on what you're building. So, so, so everybody likes to talk about their 20 acres and their farmhouse you know their homestead and stuff like that um, one thing I'd like to transition to and talk about is something that we do on a yearly basis which is the March for good people so during March of last year every show instead of having real estate professionals come on uh, for the radio show and the evening show we had nonprofits come on so if you guys have a nonprofit you're interested in having on the show so we can talk about what they do on a daily basis how they reach more people what, what we can do to help them Please comment that. If you have somebody in particular, you yeah, can always yeah. uh, send us a message or something like that. I don't have the lineup. Keishan's uh, getting everything set up, my assistant, so we have some folks coming in. But we definitely want to be able to help more people. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in to, to talk to you folks and, and to spread that message of helping good people get to a better place. And that's what we want to do on a daily basis. I mean, obviously, you're doing that with the, the loan programs you're See, doing. I'm going to put in a little plug here. I don't know if oh. you're familiar with the North Alabama Agriplex here in Coleman. I am. Yes, um, but I'm on their foundation board, okay. so that would be a great, you know, we'd Absolutely. love to get them out there. Because so she'll that's be what coming they on next week. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be back with Rachel on that so, one. So we definitely need you to come back because I know there's probably four or five topics that we didn't hit, but we try and keep the, the time limit to, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. And I we think we could probably today. talk for another hour, <laughs> you know, about this stuff. We appreciate you coming on. So give the folks your information, how they get a hold of you, can they do it online, Facebook, all that stuff. Yes, so absolutely. if they do want to ask you questions mm -hmm. after the show, they can. Yes, we have a whole mainstream of social media, so you can find us on Twitter. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook. Of course, we have a website, alabamafarmcredit.com. Uh, you can reach out to us there. Um, you can reach me personally at the Coleman office. Um, my number there is 256-734-0132. There's two other lenders there as well, so somebody should always be there. Of course, you can drop by or anything like that. So I appreciate you letting us come yes, on the show yes, tonight. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming. And like I said, next week we're going to start our March for Good People. Uh, please tune in. Please share. Um, we may even hook up something where we can do a donate. Can we do that on the live sessions? I will have to. So we'll do some that. research on it. Um, I know we'll have Coleman Care for Kids. Seven we'll years we'll drop years. Yeah, we can drop some links in. Mm -hmm. We can do the GoFundMe accounts, whatever we need to do to make sure we can help these folks. If you have a nonprofit that you're passionate about, please contact us, and we'll try our best to get them on the show. I'm sure we can make room or do extra sessions because I mean, we're blessed to be in the community we're in. Uh, I, I love the people of Coleman, North Alabama. We've got so many great farmers out there, mm -hmm. so many great people in general uh, that are doing great things. So, so generous allow us people, to that's really right, generous. Generous generous people, people mm -hmm. that are spending time, uh, you know, coin, whatever they have in order to help the next man. And that's what's great about being there we're in. So please, please share, spread the word. We want to help as many people as we can. Uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks.